Hello, I'm Claude King on Return to Me, and in this first uh, video, I want to introduce you to the whole process and the message in Return to Me. I'll be doing that over the course of this next week to lay a foundation for the remainder of the course. And in order to introduce you to the big picture, I'd like to introduce you to the seven phases in God's pattern for revival and spiritual awakening had the privilege of writing this message in Fresh Encounter that I co-authored with Henry Blackaby many years ago. Uh, if you want to turn in your books, if you have a copy of the book, you'll find this diagram on page 106. And on that page, you'll also see a description of the seven phases in God's pattern. But I want to uh, introduce you to these seven phases just briefly during this video. Phase number one, God is the one who's on mission to redeem a lost world. God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself and he's entrusted to us the ministry and message of reconciliation. In this phase, God has chosen a people who were not a people and he's made us his people. And God's plan is to work through his people to carry out his redemptive work in the world. Uh, when uh, phase seven comes to pass, uh, that's where God exalts his son Jesus through his people and he draws people to saving faith in his son. That's the natural byproduct of what God is doing in his world. He's chosen a people. He wants to work through his people to redeem a lost world. But We've got a problem. In phase two, God's people have a tendency to depart from the Lord. We uh, depart from Him, turning to substitutes for God, for His purposes, for His ways. When we depart from the Lord, it begins with a shift of our heart where we don't love Him like we're supposed to love Him. And it uh, begins to show up in our behavior where we're no longer obeying the clear commands of the Lord, or we're, not, uh, we're disobeying and violating His commands. It can happen where we turn to substitutes for God, or we begin to love and worship other things, and it gets in the way of our first love for our Lord. When God's people depart from Him, God disciplines His children out of love in phase three. He loves us so much that He doesn't want us to live a low level of spiritual vitality. And so He begs us, come on back up here where you belong, uh, working as a part of His kingdom and experiencing His power being manifested in us and through us. God loves us too much to leave us where we are. But He also uh, disciplines us because He's got work for us to do. And if we don't carry out our work, People die and go to hell. And so God disciplines His children. God's discipline continues to intensify until we get to phase four and we cry out to God for help. Now, we may cry out because we recognize that we've sinned against our Lord and He's the one who suffered and died for us and we're grieved because we've offended Him. We can cry out to Him for that reason. But uh, all too frequently, our crying out to God comes when the discipline becomes so severe and painful that we beg Him for help. But when we cry out to God for help, phase five, God gives us an invitation. Repent and return to me or perish. That's what He said to the church at Ephesus in Revelation chapter 2. They had left their first love. Well, that's where all of us begin the departure. And because they'd left their first love, Jesus said to them, Remember the height from which you've fallen and repent. And do the things you did at first. And if you don't repent, I'll take away your candlestick. Now, candlesticks don't sound too serious unless you've read chapter 1. And you realize that the candlestick represents the church. Jesus said to the church at Ephesus, If you don't repent on this one, I'll take out your church. 
but God's not interested in the perish side of this equation. He's interested in the repent side. And if we will repent, that requires a change of our mind where we agree that God's way is the right way. It requires a change of our heart where we love God and decide we're going to obey Him. It requires a change of our will where we determine we're going to live a life that's different. But it also requires a change in our actions. We've got to repent and begin to live our lives differently. When we repent, God restores, He revives His repentant people, restores us to life and vitality. That's what all of us need to experience, where God has His people where He wants them to be. And He fills us with His presence, and He works through His people to redeem a lost world. That's essentially where we're headed with Return to Me. I don't know where you and your church may find yourself in God's pattern for revival and spiritual awakening, but if you're not where you're supposed to be, my prayer is that God's Holy Spirit will reveal to you where you are in this pattern and what it is He's asking of you to return to so that you can accomplish His kingdom purposes through your life. Andrew Murray once wrote, uh, a revived church is the only hope for a dying world. That's true as much today as it was over a hundred years ago when he wrote that message. In writing about Malachi 3, 7, Murray said, God's faithfulness in keeping his promise is waiting on our faithfulness in meeting his conditions. Uh, that's essentially the subtitle of the book. God's making a plea with us to uh, return to Him. And if we will return, He's made us a wonderful promise that He will keep. He will return to us. Begin the process this week of returning to the Lord. And come on, let's go together and see what God will do through us to redeem a lost world and to allow us to experience His presence and His power working through us. Let's return to the Lord this week.